<laughs> Let's talk about Occam's razor for a moment. It's a crucial concept in philosophy and science which helps us understand reality. But it often gets oversimplified, misused or misunderstood from all directions. Not only science critics, but also its supporters. Can I call them that? So yeah, I'm going to be critiquing both sides. Wish me luck. You might for example know Occam's razor as the simplest explanation is usually the best one. Choose the simplest solution when in doubt, or simply keep it simple, stupid. And somewhere in these versions, and other similar ones, lies the problem. As you can imagine, any principle or idea that goes through such dilution or simplification procedure end up being misunderstood or misused. And that's the case here with Occam's razor. In a sense, we can also ask ourselves if Occam's razor unintentionally helps pseudoscience or let's say the argument for a divine creation but don't worry some of these misconceptions will become clear by the end of course it's a shame that Occam's razor receives a bad rep in this way especially since it can be used to sort out the clutter of ideas and theories in our surroundings it guides us towards the simplest and most sensible explanation for things but of course it's oversimplification messes up a thing or two about it, so let's unravel that. Anyway, what is Occam's Razor? There are several reasons to understand Occam's Razor, especially for scientists and science communicators, but also for your everyday use on problem solving. So let's look at what it is, how and when you can use it, and then later on let's have a look at the criticism against it as well. But first a little bit of a history lesson. Also known as the principle or law of parsimony, Occam's razor was named after William of Occam, a Franciscan friar who made a significant contribution to logic, physics and theology at Oxford during the 14th century. Basically the principle tells us that when seeking the truth, entities must not be multiplied beyond necessity. Now Occam was not the one who said this, but in essence this means that when we consider competing arguments, explanations or hypotheses, we should prefer the one with the fewest number of assumptions. But that is as long as it effectively explains the observed phenomena. So Occam's razor constantly guides the scientists, philosophers or thinkers in general to approach complex problems simply and clearly to understand our reality. It's also worth noting that Occam was not the first one to introduce the law of parsimony or, or, or Occam's razor, even though it was named after him, but many philosophers before him used it, one example being Plato. But because he had intellectual influence and tended to elicit uh, debate and controversy, Occam's ideas resonated with the scholars of his time. And so his name became associated with principle. It continues to influence critical thinking and problem solving today. Let's simplify this even further. Medical students learn this concept early on in their studies. Let's say a medical student in Europe encounters a patient with flu-like symptoms. The patient has fever, joint pain, muscle pain. But instead of proclaiming that the patient has been infected by the chikungunya virus, which is prevalent in tropical or subtropical regions, the student will recall the information that they received during their first years of medical study. If you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. So unless the patient had been traveling around in tropical or subtropical regions, the patient probably caught the flu or COVID-19. So how does it work? You know, when we formulate the idea in our heads. I don't know where I first read a version of this explanation, but I liked it. Imagine you have a mental list of everything that you know and your beliefs and whatever you encounter and learn. You create this list while living, continuously. Everything you encounter and reflect upon ends up in this list. Right now, your list probably contains, oh, I don't know, bottles, windows, birthmarks, germs, navel lint, and so on. Now imagine it's a rainy day, you're sitting by the window, looking out, you're bored, and start thinking. Suddenly you ask yourself, why does it rain? Let's say you come up with two explanations. In the first one, you imagine trolls peeing down on you from the clouds. And in the other explanation, you imagine clouds that can't contain their heavy water drops. According to Occam's Razor, you should choose the second 
explanation rather than the troll explanation. But why? Because clouds and their properties, they already exist in your mental list of beliefs and knowledge. You've either seen them or learned about them somehow. But trolls? Trolls don't exist in that list of beliefs. You'd struggle to explain where they're from, how they ended up on these fluffy clouds, or how they managed to stand on the clouds, and so on. It requires new, unknown, and unproven explanations, or ideas. And that's the idea behind Occam's Razor. I hope it makes sense. But where's the problem? Okay, so before we embrace Occam's Razor completely to solve problems, we have to acknowledge that it's not an absolute rule. It's a rule of thumb. It encourages us to favor the simplest explanation over the more complicated unknown ones to reach the truth. But it doesn't relieve you from critical thinking altogether. Blindly just picking the simplest explanation you can find can make you overlook the intricacy and nuanced aspects of our reality. Each situation requires that we carefully consider the specific problem and the evidence around it. So you want to have as much information as possible before you conclude anything. So looking at one or two or three examples and just neglecting all other explanations is not how Occam's Razor works. And it's not scientific, especially in a fast paced society like ours, where we have a debate style social media approach. We tend to fall victim to it. We make hasty conclusions based on whatever information we have available at the moment. We all do this. And as a result, people may criticize Occam's Razor. In fact, many experts do. Sometimes it gets criticized for the wrong reasons, in my opinion. For example, some would claim that a divine creation is a simpler explanation than evolution through natural selection. In fact, I received a similar comment on uh, one of my latest posts where I just reflected on the positive aspect of scientific theories being just theories. But actually the misconception is so common that Occam's Razor sometimes receives criticism from the side of science. One idea is that when Charles Darwin proposed the evolution theory, his grandfather Erasmus Darwin proposed a similar one. But Erasmus's proposal had to compete with a seemingly more straightforward explanation. The divine creation. So what's going on here? According to this perspective, the counter-argument to Occam's Razor may state that a supernatural creator might seem like a pretty complex assumption today, but it wouldn't have looked that way in the devout Victorian age. But the criticism encounters two main problems, in my humble opinion. Firstly, like cloud trolls peeing rain on your head, a divine creation presents us with too many unknowns and unproven beliefs. We would need to confirm this unknown, such as the creation and location of God, the time frame of such creation, and any missing traces. Ultimately, this explanation requires more complexity than appears from the beginning. Secondly, and this point addresses the criticism more specifically, you should seek Occam's Razor as a context-dependent or temporal procedure. What do I mean by that? The comparison between Erasmus's theory and the prevailing views of divine creationism in the devout Victorian age, as the article describes it, may not be a fair scientific comparison. Historical context, prevailing beliefs and the level of scientific understanding play a significant role when we evaluate complex theories. Several factors beyond just simplicity influence or dictate the scientific acceptance of an idea. Like it or not, apart from evidence or evidence-based explanations, scientists also adhere to current societal narratives and beliefs. So the article from before doesn't account for dogmas and norms during the Victorian age and the resulting scientific decisions. In a way, the scientific evidence for evolution hides behind the decision-making and societal norms of that time. Since societal decisions and norms don't reflect or define scientifically sound arguments or theories, a bit unfair. Let me just take one more example because it is interesting and it also lets me criticize one of the giants in science. Francis Crick once stated, 
While Occam's razor is a useful tool in the physical sciences, it can be a very dangerous implement in biology. It is thus very rash to use simplicity and elegance as a guide in biological research. So, we can assume that Francis Crick, one of the leading researchers defining the structure of DNA, refers to the overuse of Occam's razor in biology. The quote suggests that the complexity of biological mechanisms sometimes requires complex explanations. So in the context of overuse, yes, the criticism holds true. Still, biology is not necessarily immune to the use of Occam's razor, but once again, it's a matter of context. Reaching our current understanding of biological knowledge required several stages of collecting data in which scientists applied Occam's razor. Or not. The biological truths we know today, in hindsight, are more complete and seem more complex, but the path there might have required simple explanations over more complex ones. Simply speaking, Occam's razor resembles a Snapchat story. Is that how you say it? It's valuable when capturing the moment, but loses relevance as time passes and new things are discovered. Did it work? <laughs> Hypotheses keep changing the more we learn, and as a result, so does the complexity of what we know. I think we can keep using the simplicity of Occam's razor while we analyze and solve problems, but we should use it with care. I hope that makes sense. By the way, the video about scientific theory and the theory of evolution, which sparked a lot of interesting discussion, is here. Remember to keep the discussion respectful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and support my work on coffee. I need proper equipment to create better content. Until next time, Mm-hmm. <laughs>